two points of a two of the points that define a certain quadrilateral are negative four comma negative two. So let's plot that. So that's negative four comma negative two and zero comma five. And zero comma five. So that's zero comma five right over there. The quadrilateral is left unchanged by a reflection over the line y is equal to x over two. So what does that line look like? y is equal to x over two. I'll do that in blue. y is equal to x over two. So when x is equal to zero, y is zero. The y-intercept is zero here, and the slope is one half. Every time x increases by one, y will increase by one half. Or when x increases by two, y will increase by one. So x increases by two, y increases by one. X is increasing by increases by two, y is equal y increases by one. Another way to think about it, y is always one half of x. So when x is four, y is two. When x is six, y is three. When x is eight, y is four. So we could connect these. Let me try my best attempt to draw these in a relatively straight line. And then I could keep going. When x is negative 2, y is negative 1. When x is negative 4, y is negative 2. So it actually goes through that point right there, and it just keeps going with a slope of 1 half. So this line, and I could draw it a little bit thicker now, now that I've dotted it out. This is the line. This is the line. y is equal to x over 2. And they also say that the quadrilateral is left unchanged by reflection over the line, over the line y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So the y-intercept here is 5. When x is 0, y is 5. So it actually goes through that point. And the slope is negative 2. Every time we increase by 1, our x, every time we increase x by 1, we decrease y by 2. So that's, so we go there, we go there, and we keep going at a slope of negative 2. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to look something, something like this. It actually goes through that point and just keeps going on and on. So this is my best attempt at drawing that line. So that is y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Now let's think about it. Let's see if we can draw this quadrilateral. So let's first reflect the quadrilateral, or let's reflect the points we have over the line y is equal to x over 2. So this is the line y is equal to x over 2. This magenta point, the point negative 4, 2, is already on that line. So if you, it's its own reflection, I guess you could say. So it's on the mirror. <laughs> one, way, one way is to think about it. But we can easily reflect this line over here. This line, if we were to drop a perpendicular, if we were to drop a perpendicular, we drop a perpendicular, and actually, this line right over here, y is equal to negative 2x plus 5, is perpendicular to y is equal to x over 2. How do we know? Well, if one, li if you have a, if one line has a slope of m, then the line that's perpendicular would be the negative reciprocal of this. It would be negative 1 over m. So this first line has a slope of 1 half. Well, what's the negative reciprocal of 1 half? Well, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1, and you make that negative. So it is equal to negative 2. So this slope is a negative reciprocal of this slope. So these lines are indeed, these lines are indeed, I'm trying to erase that, these lines are indeed perpendicular. So we literally could drop a per perpendicular, literally go along this line right over here in, an, in our attempt to reflect. And we see that we're going kind of down, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1 twice. So let's go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1 twice again. The reflection. Let me do that in that same color. The reflection of this point across y is equal to x over 2 is this point right over there. So now we have three points of our quadrilateral. Let's see if we can get a fourth. So let's go to the magenta point. The magenta point we've already seen. It's kind of it's, it's, it's sitting on top of y equals x over 2. So trying to reflect it doesn't help us much. But we could try to reflect it across y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So once again, these lines are perpendicular to each other. Actually, let me mark that off. These lines are perpendicular, so we can drop a perpendicular and try to find its reflection. So we're going to the right 2 and up 1. We're doing that once, twice, three times on the left side. So let's do that once, twice, three times on the right side. So the reflection is right there. We essentially want to go to that line, and however far we were to kind of the, the left of it, we want to go that same, that bottom left direction. We want to go in the same direction to the top right, the same distance to get the reflection. So there you have it. There is our, there is our other point. So now we have the four points of, four points of this quadrilateral. Four points of this quadrilateral are, 
they are, or the four side, let me actually just draw the quadrilateral. We have our four points. So this is one side right over here. This is one side right over here. This is another side right over here. And you can verify that these are parallel. How would you verify that they're parallel? Well, they have the same slope. If you get from this point to that point, you have to go over, so your run has to be four, and you have to rise one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the slope here is seven fourths. So slope here, rise over run, or change in y over change in x is seven fourths. And over here, you go one, two, three, four. So you run four and then you rise one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the slope here is also seven over four. So these two lines, these two lines are going to be, these two lines are going to be parallel. And then we could draw these lines over here. These lines over here. So this one at the top, the one at the top right over there. And what's its slope? Well, let's see, we go from x equals zero to x equals eight. So we go down, our, our change in y is negative one every time we increase x by eight. So this is a slope of slope is equal to negative one over eight. And that's the exact same slope that we have right over here, negative one over eight. So these two lines are parallel as well. This line is parallel to this line as well. So at minimum, we're dealing with a parallelogram. But let's see if we can go even more specific, because this kind of looks like a rhombus. It looks like a parallelogram where all four sides have the same length. So there's a couple of ways that you could verify that this parallelogram is a rhombus. One way is you could actually find the distance between the points. You could use that. We know the coordinates, so you could use the distance formula, which really comes straight out of the Pythagorean theorem. Or even better, you can look at the diagonals of this rhombus. Or the, you can look at the diagonals of this parallelogram. We're trying to figure out if it's a rhombus. And if the diagonals are perpendicular, then you're dealing with a rhombus. And we've already shown that these diagonals, that this diagonal, this diagonal, and this diagonal are perpendicular are perpendicular, they intersect at right angles, and so this must be a rhombus.